From Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Bay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Bay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Alice has decided to take the children to Palm Springs for a few days. Phil is unable to go, so her brother William is driving them down. As we look in, Alice is saying goodbye to Phil. I hate to leave you home all alone, Phil. Just think, I'm going to be gone for three whole days. Yeah, yeah, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Stop pushing. Phil, you don't sound like you're going to miss me. Oh, honey. How can you say that? With you away, this house will be an empty shell. Every place I look, I'll see you. The memory of your face and the echo of your voice will linger in every nook and cranny. And I oh, promise... Oh, for heaven's sake, Philip, stop being so corny. <laughs> You're such a square. <laughs> shake hands with Alice and tell her goodbye. What do you mean, shake hands? I'm going to kiss her goodbye. Oh, I, I, I wish you wouldn't. Every time you do that to my poor sister, it makes me sick to my stomach. Stop it, Will. Phil, are you sure you're going to miss me? Oh, what a silly question. Of course I am. While you're gone, I won't know how to spend the weekend. I'll be lost. <laughs> oh, Willie, did you hear what Phil said? Yes, he said he's planning on spending a lost weekend <laughs> <laughs> Willie, you're being a nasty little man One more crack like that and I shall retaliate You won't dare strike me <laughs> I'll do worse than that The next time you have an angel food cake in the oven I'll stomp on the kitchen floor <laughs> <laughs> Look, don't worry about me, Alice I'm going to be working over the weekend anyway In fact, I'm having the band over tonight To uh, rehearse some classical numbers Classical numbers? Yeah, you know, stuff like Beethoven's Fifth And Schubert's Moonshine Sonata <laughs> Oh, well, as long as the boys are just coming over here to work And not to play poker all night, okay Oh, you know we wouldn't do that We would... Uh-oh, come in Alice, I assure you that the boys are just coming over to work. Uh, Mr. Harris, I got the stuff you ordered for tonight. <laughs> what stuff? Carton of ice cubes, four fresh decks, two cases... Wrong house! Get out! Get away! <laughs> Come back later. <laughs> so you and the boys are going to work tonight, huh? Yes. And what are the cards for? Car... car Oh, the cards. Oh, yeah, the cards. Well, they're card stunts like they have at a football game. You see, the musicians will hold the cards up in front of them, and it will form a full head of Petrillo. <laughs> With teeth. Oh, I see. I wish my old lady was that gullible. <laughs> now, Phil, the card stunts might make sense, but do me a favor. Explain the ice cube. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm anxious to hear this one myself. <laughs> we use the ice cubes for sound effects. Oh, I see. I don't. Explain it, bud. Explain all it. All right, all right. <laughs> we just happen to be going to rehearse first the waters of the Minnetonka. And in order to get the proper effect, we have Remley breathe on the cubes, and when they melt, we get a dripping sound. <laughs> well, I have to hand it to you. That's not bad. It ain't good. Just one more thing, darling. What's in those two cases? Uh, oh, oh, the case... Uh, the one on the left is the case of, of clarinet reeds for the woodwind section. <laughs> When do reeds come in bottles? Oh, honey, don't be silly. It's the newest thing. It keeps them airtight and fresh. Uh, isn't that right, mister? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you see what it says on the bottle, lady? Lager reeds. The reeds that made Milwaukee famous. <laughs> Thanks, mister. I appreciate it. Yeah, don't mention it. <laughs> yeah, I got a... 
I got a nosy wife, Mike. <laughs> well, that's a case of beer, and I doubt if you can explain that. I bet I can. I'll bet you can. I'll take part of that bet, lady. This guy is pretty good. I guarantee I can explain the beer, and I say now, uh, oh, the beer. Well, that's for the woodwind section. They dip their reeds in to soften them up. And now tell me, what's in the other case? That's something to soften up the brass section. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there any other questions? Yeah. What do you want me to do with the six dames I got in the truck? Take them out. <laughs> Now, that I didn't order. I know, but just for fun, let's see how you get out of that one. <laughs> Any excuse like that for my old lady. Will you I... get out of here? <laughs> Look, honey, please, why don't you and Willie go upstairs and start the packing, will you? Go ahead, I'll answer that door. Hey, hiya, Frankie Hey, Curly, I'm raffling off a turkey for Thanksgiving Can I put you down for ten tickets at a dollar apiece? <laughs> well, I don't know that's, that's a little high for a turkey raffle Well, seeing you're my best friend, I'll tell you what I'll sell them to you at half price, 50 cents apiece Okay, here's the tickets Here's the money Thanks Too bad you didn't win I mean, I didn't win. Wait till I hold a raffle, will you? <laughs> now, when is the winner going to be picked? Last night. <laughs> <laughs> Serves me right. I should have known better than to get roped on something that you're selling. Who's the guy that ran this raffle? By some strange coincidence, it was me. <laughs> uh-huh. And who picked the winning number? By an even stranger coincidence, I did. <laughs> and who won the turkey? Any more stupid questions? Look, <laughs> I don't understand you, Remley. How can you do a thing like that? I Take... didn't do it for me. I did it for you and Alice. You've been inviting me over for Thanksgiving dinner every year, so this year I'm going to supply the turkey. That's very nice of you, Frankie, but uh, Alice already bought a turkey for Thanksgiving, and we've already got it. It's in the freezer. She's All right, we'll a... save that one for Christmas. Let me surprise Alice with my turkey. I got it out in the car. I'll go get all it. All right, all right, go get it. Do you need me to help you? No, you stay here and sing. Frankie. <laughs> Ooh, you're asking me to sing. Well, why not? I'll be outside and won't hear it anyway. <laughs> go ahead. Let's choo 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 to Idaho. Come on, let's go. Let's choo 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 to Idaho. Oh, Mr. Engineer, let's hear that whistle blow to let them know we're on our way to Idaho. Hey there, fella. Soon we'll be in Pocatello and then Sun Valley. According to my Rand McNally, tell the folks back home in Shy, tell them toodaloo goodbye. Let's choo 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 to Idaho. What a trip, it's terrific on that Union Pacific. What a change from those covered wagon days. If those old 49ers had these up to date streamliners, they'd commute clear from Butte to Iowa. So hey there, fella, here we go through Pocatello and there's Sun Valley. According to my Rand McNally, tell the folks back home and shy, tell them to do goodbye. Let's choo 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 to Idaho. Well, pardon me, folks, but if you ain't observed, I'd like to announce that our dinner's served. And glancing at the menu, I am proud to say the chef is really cooking up a mess today. The full course dinner is a work of art, and I most highly recommend our a la carte. The dining car is open and it's straight ahead. The first one there is the first one there. Now it's the custom here, though it ain't the rule that if you wait, then you wait in the best of you. And folks on the car. That we aim to please We're the latest and the greatest in facilities I just got word from the engineer The green light is shining and the track is clear We break in every record and I ain't surprised Cause she's a mighty locomotive and she's diesel eyes From east to west, from coast to coast The Union Pacific is the FOMO <laughs> So hey there, Porter, 
When we pass Nebraska's border, get my suits out. Lay my shirts and western boots out. If I'm going west today, might as well go all the way. Yippee-i-o, let's choo-choo-choo to Idaho. Come on, let's go. Let's choo-choo-choo to Idaho. Come on, let's go. Let's choo-choo-choo to Idaho. Is it all clear in there? You still singing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just finished. You can come on in. Well, here she is. How do you like her? <laughs> How do you do, miss? I'm always glad to meet a girlfriend of Frankie. <laughs> Alan, where's the turkey? Don't be a wise guy. This is the turkey. Oh. With your girlfriends, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> the last one you had looked like a unicorn. <laughs> she did not look like a unicorn. Just seemed that way because her head came to a point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh, Remley, look, will you listen to that? We can't keep a live turkey in the house. Get old Tom out of here. <laughs> Curly, please, don't call her old Tom. Charmaine happens to be a lady. <laughs> Charmaine? Ooh, la la, a French turkey yet, huh? <laughs> She's very sensitive. You better apologize to her. Oh, by all means, I shall. I beg your pardon, madame. Mademoiselle. <laughs> She's not married yet. Well, propose to her and get her out of my house <laughs> Look, if Alice sees a live turkey in her living room She'll yell, blue murder, you but can't keep a thing She doesn't have to see her We'll hide Charmaine in the closet until after Alice leaves We'll surprise her when she gets back from Palm Springs All right, anything Come on, Frenchie <laughs> Now get in there, get in there Look, Frankie uh, Oh, listen to that We'd better tie her up and gag her so she won't make any noise Now come on and get in there and help me And close that closet door so nobody overhears it You and a live turkey <laughs> Well, Willie, I guess I'm all packed Will you ask Phil to help carry the suitcases to the car? Very well, Alice, I'll get him If I were Alice, I wouldn't trust Philip home alone He needs a keeper He's nothing but a middle-aged juvenile delinquent <laughs> Philip, Alice wants you to come out to... That's funny. I could have sworn he was here in the living room. I never what oh, told him what they were talking about. Somebody. Hmm, somebody's in that closet. I wonder who it is. I'll just sneak up and listen. Hey, Curly, will she be all right in here? She won't smother, will she? Nah. <laughs> She'll be all right. Now, look, Charmaine, don't make a fuss, and we'll let you out as soon as my wife leaves. Charmaine? He's got a woman in there. Charmaine, will you please stop squirming like that and leave... Ouch! Remley, she bit me. <laughs> She's a wild one, too. I'm going to put a stop to this right now. I'm going upstairs and tell Alice he has a woman in the house. Hey, Curly, I think I heard somebody out there. It sounded like Willie. Oh, blabbermouth. Certainly, he'll run right up and tell Alice and spoil our surprise. Look, we better hide that turkey in the den. Now, mm. come on, Charmaine. Get up. Come on. <laughs> Oh, Alice, 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 have I got something to tell you? Wait till you hear this Well, calm yourself and tell me, what is it? Alice, I'm not one to start trouble between you and your husband But it gives me a great deal of pleasure to inform you that Philip is unfaithful Oh, what are you talking about? Philip has a French hussy named Charmaine hidden in the living room closet Oh, Willie, stop being ridiculous. If you don't believe me, look in the closet yourself. I have no intention of looking in the closet. But, sis, this is the opportunity I've been waiting for for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> this is our chance to divorce the old cotton ball. <laughs> now, Willie, I want you to stop trying to come between Phil and me with your wild stories. I'm going downstairs to say goodbye to Phil. Do me a favor, Alice, and look in that closet. I will not. Hmm. I trust Phil implicitly. Some wives would be suspicious, but I'm not that kind. 
I'd no more think of snooping around. Oh, there you are, Alice. Hi, you all ready to go? Yes, dear. I, I just came in to say goodbye. Well, so long, honey. <laughs> Have a nice time, dear. Remley, let go of <laughs> Take care of yourself, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye now. Now, how did I ever happen to walk into this closet? <laughs> it's a natural mistake. You've only been living here nine years. How should you know where the front door is? <laughs> So long, fellas. Yeah, so long. Bye. Alice, the door ain't behind the curtains either. <laughs> oh, I'm a little confused. Well, well, so long. Curly, what's she doing under the couch? <laughs> Kissing her mother goodbye. <laughs> Short, Short chain. chain. <laughs> hey, Alice, what are you looking under that couch for? Oh, Oh, is this the couch? I guess I'm getting nearsighted. Well, bye. <laughs> goodbye. Bye. Yeah, goodbye. Hey, she finally found the door. Yeah, this kid knows what she's doing every minute. Oh, what now? What can this... All right, come in, come in. Hi, Mr. Harris. My name is Homer Feinschreiber, and I just flew all the way out here from Altoona, Pennsylvania. I run a pool room back there. I'm a nice guy. I mind my own business. I'm yeah, a but, member but of the I Chamber do. of Commerce. But I the do. last few days, my wife has well, been driving me crazy. She's hysterical. Well, I can't... She just lays there in bed and screams at me. She I've won't got... get up and cook my meals. She won't iron my shirt. I've got my The own. other morning, she leaned down and kicked my youngest son, Wilbur. Well, well I... that's going too <laughs> far. <laughs> I don't know. But it's all on account of you. Well, I can't... Oh, I really you don't know me. I have no right to come I breaking don't... and your beautiful home like this, but you've got to tell me something so I can go back and well, tell look. my wife, Mr. Harris, what is the thing? <laughs> look, buddy, I'm a busy man. I don't know what I did. Look, go back and tell your wife that the thing is... Mr. Harris, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize your wife was rehearsing her song. Hey. <laughs> Look, Remley, I got live turkeys, people breaking in from Altoona. What are you trying to do to me? I can't stand all this trouble. Why don't you take that turkey of yours and give it to somebody else? After all, I told you, we got a turkey in the freezer. Yeah, but I'll bet the turkey Alice born ain't as good as mine. It looks pretty good to me. What I... do you know about turkeys? I'll look in the freezer, and if that bird isn't as good as mine, we'll keep Charmaine and get rid of yours. All right, go ahead and look at it. All this darn fuss over a turkey. Ah, I was... just as I thought I knew I'd catch you with a whoo. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're all alone. That'd have been a lot bigger laugh if you'd have waited for the door to open. <laughs> As long as you're here, what now? <laughs> oh, before I go, dear, there's something I want to say. Well, say it, will you? What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> for the band to pick up their instruments. Oh. <laughs> Bye bye, baby. Remember you're my baby when they give you the eye. And just to show that I care, I will write and declare that I'm on the loose, but I'll stay on the square. I'll be lonely, but even though I'm lonely, there'll be no I. My baby by and by Bye bye baby Remember you
your heart, baby, when they give you the eyes. Although I know that you care, won't you write and declare that though I'm the loose, you are still on the square. I'll be lonely, but send that rainbow to me, then my shadows will fly. Though I'll be gone for a while, I know that I'll be smiling with my baby by and by. Alice, that was wonderful. You have a remarkable voice. She huh? certainly has. It's amazing how much she sounds like a quartet at times. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I guess I'm ready to go now. Yeah, well, go already. Well, bye. Goodbye. Bye. They certainly were anxious to get rid of me. I wonder if he does have a woman. In... No. <laughs> I know he hasn't, but just to make sure, I'll sneak back and listen. I'll make believe I'm going out the front door. Now, now, to tiptoe back and see just what's going on. I thought that wife of yours would never leave, Curly. Yeah. You think she suspects anything? No. <laughs> How could she possibly know anything about Charmaine? He does have a woman in the house. Well, Frankie, look, after comparing the two, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, should I keep Charmaine? Naturally There's no comparison Between Charmaine And that old hen you got <laughs> Old hen? I'm only 29 and a half Besides, Charmaine Is nice and plump The old hen I got's pretty fat, too <laughs> I put on a half a pound And right away I'm a tub <laughs> Look, Frankie, hmm? uh, maybe I ought to keep the one I got. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Charmaine is young. That one you got has seen better days. <laughs> True. <laughs> Besides, I pinched them both, and Charmaine has a lot more meat on it. <laughs> I don't know about Charmaine, but he's never laid a hand on me. All right, Remley, look, I'll keep Charmaine. I gotta admit, uh, she looks a lot more tender. If Charmaine had two children, she wouldn't be so tender either. <laughs> hey, uh, wait a minute, Frankie. Uh, hmm? If I do keep Charmaine, what am I gonna do with my old turkey? Give her away to some charity. Give her to the Musicians' Union. <laughs> Musicians Union, do you think they'd take her? They'll take anything. <laughs> that does it, calling me a turkey. If he wants to get rid of me, he can. I'll go upstairs and pack the rest of my things and leave him for good. I'll show him he can't talk to me. Hey, Miss Faye, <laughs> When Miss Faye is, is crying. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, Julius, it's Mr. Harris. He's brought another woman named Charmaine into the house. Another woman? Ah, <laughs> oh, Miss Faye, let's keep our heads. Do you honestly think your husband is the kind of a heel who would bring another woman into your own home? Do you honestly think that? Well, no, I don't. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the Charmaine dance? No, I haven't, and I don't want to. I heard Frankie and Mr. Harris talking about her, and I'm leaving Now, him. wait a minute, Miss Faye. Don't be hasty. This might all be a misunderstanding. Before you decide to leave Mr. Harris, you should take a lot of time to think this over. Well, maybe Time's I... up! <laughs> Go upstairs and start packing. On your way before you change your mind. I'm going upstairs and start packing right now. I heard him planning to get rid of me. Ooh, that beast. <laughs> I wonder how he's planning on getting rid of Miss Faye. Is he going to divorce her or just throw her out in the street? I don't know why I ever got a thing in the Uh-oh, like here he comes. Come I'm just stuck there. behind here and maybe I can overhear his plan. Well, Curly, as long as you decided to keep Charmaine and get rid of the other hand, let's make plans. Yeah. I don't want to run around the house alive. When is Alice coming back to Palm Springs? Wednesday night. Good. 
I'll bring the axe over Wednesday morning. <laughs> axe? Them cold-blooded murderers is gonna kill her. Frankie, hmm? I can't use the max on her. That's too cruel. Well, I'm glad to see he has some decency. <laughs> Let's tie her to a stake and fill her full of buckshot. <laughs> well, I hope they at least blindfold her. Curly, I don't like the buckshot idea. Why not? Some of the pellets might get in our teeth when we eat her. <laughs> Julius, what are you doing in here? I overheard you planning to kill Miss Faye. What are you talking about killing Miss Faye? We're going to kill Charmaine. Oh, you tire of him fast, don't you? <laughs> what are you killing her for? So we can have her for Thanksgiving dinner? Can't afford a turkey, huh? <laughs> oh, be quiet, will you, kid? Hey, Curly, I got an idea. When we bring Charmaine in for dinner Thursday, I think Alice would like it if we dressed her first. Look, Remley, that's going to be too much trouble. Now, let's bring her in undressed. <laughs> the least you can do is put a kimono on her. <laughs> <laughs> a kimono on Charmaine? All right, then. Make it a French bathing suit. Oh, shit. Why don't you leave That her? wouldn't look nice. Her pin feathers would stick out. <laughs> this dame has pin feathers? Oh, Julius... Will you stop already? What, Dame? Charmaine is a turkey. A likely story. We can prove it. She's right here in the den. I'll show you. I'll be done. That is a turkey. This upsets all my plans. What are you talking about, plans? Plans? What do you mean, plans? Miss Faye overheard you talking and thought you had a dame here. She's upstairs packing to leave you. Leave me? Oh, no. Come on, Frankie. We got to explain this to Alice. You and that turkey. You ah, oh, nuts. This will ruin everything. Miss Faye expects to find a French dame. Now when she opens the door, she'll only find a turkey. Or will she? <laughs> a quick phone call might keep this ugly mess and I'll be met. <laughs> Alice, will you please believe me? For the tenth time, I tell you Charmaine is a turkey. Well, how do I know you're telling me the truth? I'll open the door to the den and you'll see that it's a turkey. Now, there you are, Alice. This is our turkey. Gobble for my wife, Charmaine. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> Look what our little turkey has grown up into. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> so this is your idea of a turkey, huh? But honey, when I put her in there, she was a turkey. She must have come out of her cocoon or something. <laughs> I never saw this dame before. Oh, Sherry. How can you say that about your little Charmaine? You like me, do you not? Hmm? Look, lady, I got no time for that right now. <laughs> How'd you get in here? Who put you in this room? <laughs> oh, Julius, grab him, Frankie. We'll have him for Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, Julius. you tear his drumsticks off and I'll stuff him. I'll stuff him. <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> Folks. Starting today, our program has wonderful news. Listen to this, the Hedda Hopper Show. Hedda's guests tonight are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, Mario Lanza, Andy Devine, and Arlene Dahl. It's the Hedda Hopper column come to life. Stay tuned for it, and best wishes, Hedda, from Alice and me. Good night, everybody. Good night. This program was produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Yes, listen now for the Hedda Hopper Show on NBC.